With the ring and the guitar strings, we are ready to go. Welcome to the show right here on Shaw TV. My name is Matt Carter. Welcome to episode number 148, the 12th episode of our seventh season again of the show on Shaw TV. Our musical guest right in behind me right now, all the way from Langley, his name is Ted Kim, and performs under the name Dear Father. We're gonna chat with the Mighty Spec Records recording artist later on through the show about his music, and of course, hear some songs throughout the hour. Now on today's show, we're very happy to welcome our friends from A. Leelam back to the Shaw TV studios. We're going to learn more about the second generation Coast Salish design house and meet two of the artists who have designed their own clothing line. We have some uh, fashion uh, show footage for you as well. Now from a couple people that can make you look really good to a guy who has made me look really silly and confused on a couple of occasions, very helpful to wel welcome magician Craig McKee back to the program for more feats of magic and we'll see how he can wow all of us once again. Uh, from there, we have a number of segments uh, on exercise and good health, because apparently multiple reps of lifting a beer bottle from the table to the mouth is not a good exercise program. So as part of our recurring Seniors Connect series, we're going to look into options for physical movement and exercise for adults in their 70s and up. We've also managed to uh, drag our exercise guru, Casey Scott, out of the gym for an hour to bring some friends with her and talk a little about Zumba. And I guarantee you, after doing exercise with uh, Casey, it's not just Doc Brown on Back to the Future yelling, Great Scott! Great Scott, Casey Scott is her name. Anyways, forget Doc Brown, we've actually got Farmer Brown here on the show, a much preferable Brown, I tell you. Uh, Chris Brown himself, um, even though he also gets good exercise from farming away and swatting Marty McFly's out of his face during the summer season. Uh, now, if you don't have time to manage an entire farm ship co-op, stick around for a few minutes and learn a lot about local foods, as well as about an upcoming Earth Day event here in Nanaimo. Happy Earth Day to you. Uh, but first, we're gonna kick off the show with a very poignant story. We're about to meet a uh, Nanaimo family with a very uh, brave and quite adorable uh, young daughter. I mean, the only adorable thing I can do is this. So, so it's going to be much more adorable, so stick around. We're going to meet the family. Also, we're going to meet a local entertainer who is putting together a quite an important fundraiser in support of this family. So what is the story? How can you help? Stick around for those answers and your view on Central Vancouver Island. Thanks so much for watching. It's the show right here on Shaw TV. We have a, a very poignant story to start out the show today, and I am thrilled to be introducing a very brave young family who are dealing with every family's biggest fear, a life-threatening illness. We're here to talk to the mom and dad today to learn a little bit about, uh, they're sharing their story around awareness to help other parents who may find themselves in this situation. And then we're gonna introduce you to a wonderful, island musician who is going to be uh, telling us about an amazing fundraiser and how every one of us can get behind this fabulous event. So first off, I'd like to introduce my guests today. I'm going to start with you, Michaela Langley. Hello. You are Ariel's mom. So tell me a little bit about um, Ariel's situation and how all this got started. Well, on uh, February 15th is when we found out that Ariel was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Um, it is affecting her eyesight. Um, her tumor has led it so she can no longer see any vision in her left eye and she can only see 2150 out of her right eye. So her peripheral view um, is no longer available for little Ariel. Um, her, my husband, her dad, actually was the one who um, found out that uh, she was having a little bit of trouble with her eye, so we uh, decided to go to Nanaimo Hospital, and that's when um, the eye test determined that her structure of her eyes looked very well, but um, there must have been something more in behind her brain, so we were booked for an appointment for a CT scan here in Nanaimo and that is when we were informed our little bundle of joy um, was diagnosed with a brain tumor and that's why she was losing sight. Um, so we had to get in touch with uh, BC Children's Hospital to see what the next step was so our little daughter wouldn't lose all her eyesight. Okay, now Shay. Um, perhaps you want to tell us a little bit about what this experience has been like for you, a young father obviously raising a little girl. Um, 
share a little bit with us some of your story? Um, it's been absolutely frightening. Yeah. Um, you know, you'd, you'd think with her acting a little bit differently, you know, she was tripping through doorways, not, not anything major, but she was just acting a little bit different. And for the first day or two, we copped it up to growth spurts that, you know, when she's been growing quite significantly, when we talked to her doctor about it, they, they, when they grow, they can be a little bit unsure on their feet. But one day we were hanging out in the kitchen and she was in the living room and I called her to come for, for lunchtime. And when she looked at me, her left eye focused perfect her right eye focused perfectly and her left eye kind of wandered so right we went to the emergency room right away which ended up being the right thing to do um, because we were told that with you know small symptoms like that they're really easy to disregard um, if we had waited even a day longer there was a high risk that she would have been blind a very 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 tough story for every family now are we gonna say hello to ariel ariel you want to jump up here in daddy's arms so we can introduce you no? All right then, we won't. But I have someone else over here that we want to introduce. Do you know this guy's name? Ariel. <laughs> it's Woofy, that's right. And you I, are? I'm Brent. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Brent. What you guys are planning is phenomenal. Share with us a little bit about the upcoming fundraiser you've planned for. Well, I found the story on Facebook and said, what can I do? Mm -hmm. And this is what I do, so this is what I'll do. April 22nd. 3 p.m. at the Cavallotti Hall. We're gonna do a concert for Ariel. All the proceeds go to these guys because they gotta to get to Vancouver. Okay. Uh, Ian Johnson will be there. I'll be there with Woofy. The Island Princesses will be there. And I have two young girls mm -hmm. coming on to sing uh, Woofy songs. They're eight and 11. Uh, I know, and they are Angela Mc Mulcahy, yes. who's 11, and Meredith Northrup. Yes, so, it's, be great. it's family show. Okay. Bring grandma, grandpa. Bring a couple bucks to throw, we're, you know, suggest a 10 bucks, throw it in the, in the thing there and let's have fun. Okay. So, well, Wolfie, well, I heard you're turning 25 this year. Is that true? 25 years old. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm boy. really old. I'm older than she is. <laughs> okay, Brent, thank you so, so much. Um, we're going to wrap things up here and throw things back over to Dear Father, who has an amazing song for us, very appropriately, appropriately entitled, Life.
Thank you, Ted, dear father. That was an awesome, very touching song. So ladies and gentlemen, on March 21st of this year, the fashion world was rocked when the Eileen Lim Good House of Design from here in Nanaimo presented a whole new line of clothing developed by An Lee, sisters An Lee and Sophia, who are with me tonight. Welcome Hi. to the show, ladies. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I know you stand on some pretty broad shoulders. Mom and Dad, uh, your father, William Good, was a noted Coast Salish carver, I understand, and your mother developed a, a, a line of clothing in her own right. Mm -hmm. And now that they've retired, you've taken up the, the reins, so I understand. Yes. And they've developed a whole new line of clothing. Uh, could you tell us a little bit, Sophie, can you talk a little bit about this new line of clothing you've developed? Sure, so our collection this season was called Faltalada. Uh, Faltalada was the traditional game name given to our mother, Sandra Morehouse Good, from our late grandmother, Hazel Good, here from the Sinemo territory. Uh, Faltalada meaning maker of beautiful things. So we really wanted to honor our mother and mentor who's helped us design and uh, do some really custom pieces. It's a very beautiful name. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, can we talk a little bit about some of the uh, the, uh, the designs that, uh, that you've developed. Uh, could you talk a little bit about not only you've developed some, some sure. stunning new designs, which we're going to see in a few minutes sure. at this video clip. Thank you. So we feature traditional Coast Salish artwork uh, <coughs> by yeah. our dad, William Good, and our brother, Joel Good. But the Saltalata collection specifically has sea serpent designs by our brother, Joel Good. Mm -hmm. and we'll be seeing them uh, very shortly on the uh, on this video clip we're going to watch. Uh, I understand there's some original music that, uh, that goes with the fashion show clip we're going to see. Yes, so we went into the recording studio with producer Rob the Viking here in Nanaimo and we recorded our own original music track with our brother Joel. Uh, Sophie's little baby Phil is featured in our music as well and our dad did go to the recording studio as well. Well, why don't we watch a little bit about this fashion show. It was in Vancouver. It was, uh, it's a major fashion show with, uh, I guess, other fashion designers that happened and... Uh, yes, and we were in Emerging, the Emerging Designer Night, the feature night, and it was for Vancouver Fashion Week. Very good. Well, we've got a little clip here, so uh, why don't we watch a little bit of... Uh, Great. ...from this fashion show, which was on um, back in March in Vancouver. <laughs> feel to be at a show like that? What are your feelings and thoughts after being there? It was awesome. We loved it and it was so professional and it was an amazing platform to show our artwork and our family's artwork so we just loved every minute of it. Yeah. 
Where did you find all those, uh, all the models for your, uh, for your fashion items there? Vancouver Fashion Week supplies the models. So we made garments within the specifications and uh, then they were featured. So uh, Sophia and Anneli, I understand you're wearing a couple of your own creation garments. Could you talk a little bit about them? Yes, these are garments that we created with our mother's help uh, at our home here in Nanaimo. And they're made out of recycled fleece and they have our brother's artwork, Joel Good. So now that you've uh, this major uh, triumph, I should call it, uh, from that fashion show in Vancouver during Fashion Week, do you, what do you see down the road for Eileen and Good House of Design? You, some new designs you're going to be coming up with, more shows perchance? Yes. I think we're going to really see a transformation from our uh, parents' older style to, I think, more of my sister and brother's uh, vision, just really empowering our sense of vision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, any final thoughts you'd like to share about uh, your recent experience at Fashion Week? Well, it was amazing and it was so great for you to showcase us here today, so thank you for having us. And thank you very much for joining us, Anneli and Sophie. Now I'm going to throw it over to Matt Carter and uh, Craig the Magic Man. They're going to do some magic for us, I understand. Well, hello. Uh, unfortunately, Matt can't join us, but I have found some wonderful replacements for him in both Fab and Tamara. I'm Craig. I am Nanaimo's resident magician. I'm the magician here at Shaw, and we're going to have some fun today. Uh, just to let you know, you will be properly introduced to these two ladies a little bit later on. For now, I'm going to introduce you to 52 of my other friends. This regular deck of cards here, we'll give it a shuffle, makes people think I'm being fair, which I'm not, but it's nice to maintain the illusion. Now, Fab, if I, very simple here, I'm just going to cruise through here, I'll get you to call stop, when okay. you call stop, I'll split the pack, nice and simple. Okay. Whenever you'd like. Okay, stop. Ooh, Very quick. abrupt, that was excellent. <laughs> now, Fab, you have stopped me unbelievably at the six of diamonds, which by pure magic I have turned into the four of spades. <laughs> Matt's not here, so someone has to do the bad jokes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to hand you that Sharpie there. I'm going to get you just to do a quick little doodle right in the middle of the four of spades, anything you'd like. There we are, smiley face, we'll show that to the camera. And we'll show that to you. This is going to be important for you to remember as well. It's also going to be important for me to remember to put this away. <laughs> Fab, we're going to take your card and place your card inside this half of the pack. Just like that. Okay. This is not the amazing part. Just to let you know. <laughs> okay. Tamara, you're going to do the exact same thing, only okay. since we're working with half a pack, say so stop nice and quickly so I can split it so you can find a card. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Of course you are. Stop. Well done. <laughs> Very quickly. Now, I don't have as many bad jokes as Matt does, so I'm just <laughs> going to turn this over and reveal your ace of hearts. Excellent. That's fantastic. I just happen to have a different colored Sharpie by Pure and Total Fluke. I'll hand nice. you that. And again, just a small doodle right in the middle. It is now the two of hearts. <laughs> Nobody likes that joke. Nice. I say it every time something like that happens. <laughs> Nobody likes the joke. Now, we're going to take your ace, or I'll show you that as well. I'll show the cameras. Place your ace directly inside what we'll call your half of the pack. This is a relatively important setup to note that we have both of your selections inside the packs at two completely different locations. And if we square everything up like this, you can really kind of get the visual that they are in two different locations. What I'm going to do is attempt to get one of your two cards to make itself known to us. Now this is nice and simple. We just give it a snap. And what ends up happening is one of your two cards will become very obviously apparent to anybody watching. Mm. Yes. The only card <laughs> facing the mm. wrong way in the entire pack. Wow. Now that's just one. That's pretty cool though. That is it, really it, it is cool, but it'd be even better if we could just give it one more snap and get one more card to become once again readily apparent to absolutely anybody watching. Wow. 
<laughs> now, that's fun, but what's more curious is that we had two different packs with the cards in the middle of them, meaning that they're separated by about half a pack each. Well, they, I shouldn't say that they are separated by about half a pack each because they aren't any longer separated oh. by half a pack each. Wow. They're Very back to cool. back. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, <laughs> thank you, but we're just getting warmed up here. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Fab, can I get you to hold one hand out, just rest it against the table here. Um, Tamara, I'll get you to hold one hand, hover it just above hers. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to take both of your cards, square them up, place them in between your hands. I'm going to get you to press down on her hand. Do not crush it, though. Okay. Yeah, don't crush it. Uh, this is important for two reasons. One is, of course, the sake and safety of your hand. The <laughs> other th thing is that while both of your cards are in there, I'm actually going to reach in there and attempt to steal, this is going to sound odd, I'm going to attempt to steal one half of each of your cards. Oh my goodness. Okay. Does that make any sense whatsoever? No, no. Yes. that's what I'm here for. <laughs> okay. That's my job. So I'm going to square these up, place them directly in your hand, you press down, and we're going to attempt to achieve an absolute miracle. All right. Here we go. Go ahead, press down. All right. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> She's really challenging me here. Um, <laughs> you're right, you're covering the whole thing here. Um, but we can, we should be able to go in there and steal half of each card. Oh my goodness. Which should leave you with the other halves inside yours. Go ahead, open your hand up. Show the camera, turn it over. Oh my goodness. Uh. Check it out. Is, is it one card? Is it one card or is that two glued together? It's one it's card. One card. <laughs> okay, I don't know how you did that. I don't either. It's like up your sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the trick that we have for you wow. today. Wow. Nice job. Amazing. It is my great pleasure now to toss over to Kathy, who's going to be talking to us, uh, along with her guest, about how to outlast your Fitbit. <laughs> Well, thanks, Craig. I got to tell you, Tammy and Fab, he is really sneaky with those cards, and I don't even know how he does it. But I'll tell you, it's simply fabulous. So it's wonderful having him on the show. I'm glad that uh, we can bring some magic to your day. Today with me is one of my magical people who I love working with every single day. Her name is Krista Whitaker. Krista is with the Better at Home program in the Nanaimo Family Life Association, and she works with all kinds of our older adults in the community but she has a great passion for looking after our older adults' health and wellness with physical activity. Welcome to the show, Krista. Thank I'm so you. glad you're here. So Krista, I know that you were with the Better at Home program and have been with the Better at Home program for about a year mm -hmm. and a half, but all the way along, your passion has been studying kinesiology. See, I said That's it, it. Yeah. kinesiology, <laughs> sure. yeah. and got your degree from UBC. Yeah. What was your reason for going through that, uh, that program and getting your degree? Mm -hmm. So I've always really enjoyed physical activity um, and about probably my first year I realized how fortunate I was to have all my grandparents alive and well um, and to have really great relationships with them. And so since my first year I've been trying to create a program where you can prolong you know, healthy living in the geriatric population um, so other people are fortunate to have seniors around and impact their life positively. So some of the things that people can do are very basic. They're mm -hmm. very simple things Definitely. to keep our health and wellness up. So for a person who's, let's say, over 70-ish, mm -hmm. 65, I mean, all of us can benefit from these yep. exercises. Mm -hmm. But for a person over 70, what might that look like for a simplified exercise program? I guess it's just keeping active and getting moving. Um, simple things like gardening, um, playing with grandkids um, can all be very beneficial. So, but there's also things you can do. I, I remember a long time ago with Jack LaLanne, and some, this is before your time, darling, but you know, some of these very fit people. And with these fit people, they would do simple things with bands and with soup cans and things like that. Is that something that actually is working or is that something that's just a, a wives tale? No, it, it definitely works. And what's great about bands or soup cans or any exercises with those is they can be done in your home. So you don't have to leave and, or go to a group setting. You can do it by yourself and you can reap the benefits uh, of using those. So 
in your opinion, mm -hmm. it doesn't, it, it really doesn't matter whether it's gardening, any kind of physical activity. What do you think that that does to the body as an older adult and the concerns that we have with mobility? Definitely. So just moving um, has so many benefits. It um, decreases depression. It you know increases mood. You have better sleep. You have more social connectedness. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just physical activity, right? That's not um, exercise and everything else. Just getting moving helps. So in working with some of the better at home people, have you found that there's a lot of stagnant? Um, I don't want to say stagnant. Stagnant is mm -hmm. not the right word, but but we we tend to sit a lot when we get older in front of the television. By the way, we are so glad you're here watching this. But <laughs> in front of the television, what can we do, even just watching television, that would help with our physical wellness? Yeah, I guess it's important to um, incorporate physical activity throughout the day, right? So um, between your shows, get up and you know walking the length of you know 100 meters or 50 meters whatever you're capable of um, taking the bands and doing the little workouts at the commercials and everything um, mm -hmm. that all adds up and it helps it really does mm -hmm. and so you're also studying you've got your degree from UBC yep. but what's your intention as you graduate where's your, what's your plan um, so I hope to pursue uh, physiotherapy or occupational therapy um, and those kind of just be the the bottom line and then build something to work with seniors and prolong healthy living with seniors. And so your intention then in the coming weeks and months is to really work towards helping seniors in their homes with exercise programs. What might, you know, if you were to be brought on by one of the families, what might that look like uh, as, a, as a beginning point for somebody interested in getting into an exercise program? Mm -hmm. I guess the first thing is getting to know um, the senior, um, their interests and everything. You'd have to go through kind of a medical clearance to make sure everything you're doing is okay and approved of. Um, and then you just build your program around that. So different balance things, different strength movements, um, a little bit of endurance, a little bit of walking, stuff like that. Very simple and it'd be great too to create relationships with them while you're working one-on-one. -on -one. And it's only like five minutes at a time, 10 minutes at a time. All of that stuff adds up in the big, big picture. Yeah, exactly. I'm so glad that you joined us today, Krista. Thanks a whole big bunch. And we look forward to seeing what you're going to do with our community as we move forward. And congratulations on your degree as Thank well. You. If you want to find out more information about how you can have a healthy lifestyle, you really need to get in touch with everybody at Seniors Connect. It's time to engage in this community. And we look forward to sharing all kinds of programs with you. All you have to do is go www www.seniorsconnect.ca or give us a call at Nanaimo Family Life Association. Next up is some more exercise, only this one's Zumba. A little bit more fun with Krista, uh, not Krista, that's Krista, with Casey Scott. Thank you, Kathy. Casey Scott here. As she mentioned, we are here today to talk to you about a very popular fitness class called Zumba. You may be aware of some of the physical benefits that Zumba has on your body, but today we're going to go one step farther. We're going to talk about how Zumba actually affects your brain in some really positive ways. And then these ladies are going to attempt to teach me a little, a couple new moves. I want to start by welcoming to the show my good co-workers and friends, Tamara and Fab. Thank you so much for being on the show Thank tonight. You. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Yeah, let's start with the obvious question. What is Zumba? Okay, Zumba is a Latin inspired dance fitness workout. So it is all over the world, over 15 million people do Zumba every week in 180 countries. It started in 2001 and with Zumba you have to have merengue, salsa, cumbia and reggaeton and that is your Latin inspired uh, rhythms for the, that drives the dance fitness. Amazing, all right, tell me a little bit about the physical benefits. Uh, physical benefits, obviously, like you said, you know, it's, you know, you're moving, so you're uh, burning calories, you're burning fat, you're, you can lose weight and not even realize it because it's so much fun. Yeah, that's the best <laughs> part about it, right? <laughs> and um, improving your strength, your coordination, your uh, aerobic and anaerobic capacity, your cardiovascular system, respiratory system, it really is head to toe a full body workout. I had the pleasure of taking Tamara's class, first time I've ever done Zumba, just a couple of months ago. And and I think I burned extra calories because I took quite a few extra steps <laughs> when I was out there, but it was really fun. That's Earlier, perfect. Fab, you talked to me a little bit about the mental and emotional aspects Absolute, of Zumba. Absolutely. Um, so for mental, it really is a mood booster, right? You yeah. could be having a terrible day and you go to a Zumba class and it's so happy. And we always get that. Why is everybody so True. happy all the time? But that's what it is, right? It's changing your mood. Um, so emotional benefits. 
um, amazing, especially working with um, you know, people that suffer from anxiety or depression, things like that. Um, they're not having to use as much medication because they're using Zumba and moving and dancing. The music takes them away, right? And remembering things of their past and like great experiences that they, that they have had. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about the cognitive aspect of Zumba. So we're by far no experts on this. And what I want you to really understand though is the information is coming. The science is there. They are on breakthroughs. Yeah way I like to pick it really, really simple is when you are sweating, your heart is, your heart rate is elevated, you've got the groove going on, but you're also using your brain. So unlike the elliptical, don't get me wrong, I love the running, I love <laughs> ellipticals, but there's not a whole lot of thought process. We're probably on our phone, we're probably chatting with the buddy next to us. In Zumba, tango, salsa, anything that's got your heart rate up, but it also has your brain working, it's really being linked to studies to, I don't know if I can say prevent or aid in it can, Parkinson's. It can definitely increase your um, brain cells, so yeah, it's increasing. Absolutely. Alzheimer's, yes. Parkinson's, all sorts of stuff that is being linked to the brain and the benefits. So watch for the science. More of it is coming more and more and more. And it's fun, so Absolutely. even if it's not really for health benefits, it really, really is a fun way to do it. And a lot of memorization, right? With the choreography, you're watching what the instructor's doing and you're, you're memorizing it. So every time you hear that same song, you know, oh, I've got to do this. So it's it is really, of, it's yeah. absolutely the repetitive and memorization. So that's why the people in the class that really had yeah. it going on, they knew the music. They knew the music, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that leads me into Zumba Gold, because you were kind of talking about skills yes, and absolutely. patterns so Zumba, of the brain. Zumba Gold is for aging adults. It's also used for people with uh, mobility issues. In fact, Zumba Gold is being used in some of the senior facilities right now, um, focusing on things like putting on your, like getting dressed, right? So you could be dancing to music while you're putting, you know, your jacket on, or that. you're washing your hair, right? So life skills, so yeah, life skills absolutely. All of that, combing your hair, putting a shirt on. Like yeah. what's pants. it, what's it, Put right? Your you're putting Put on your pants. pants. Awesome. Exactly. <laughs> well, let's exactly. move this in. Let's give a little demo right. of what this is. You okay. are going to take the lead on Absolutely. this. Absolutely. We've got some music. If I can get going. anybody, anybody else, else that wants to come on out here and uh, again, yes. with me. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Let's see what this what? is all about. You okay. guys at home, ready? get up off the Ready to put your pants on? Perfect. So what we want to do right now is let's just do a little bit, just a basic salsa move. I think I can hear some music. Is there some music going on there? Perfect. So let's just go side to side. Perfect. Good. Now let's add a little bit of flavor. Let's move those hips. Yeah. Okay. How much? How about a little bit more flavor? Start the shimmy. Oh, you got it. Oh, yeah. oh there we go. Yeah. Perfect. How about a little toe tap? Right. Little toe taps. Perfect. Now, in a Zumba class, you would be facing, facing your students, right? Because we're connecting. Right now, for this, for the purpose of this show, obviously, but we can see you. Perfect. Again, shake it. Let's take it back to that side one. Good. Right here. Little three, you see that? <laughs> Yeah. How about, should we attempt something different? We've got a plant going on over here. Let's go, let's go. One step forward, one step back. Forward, back. You yeah. can Other foot? Yeah, good. Excellent. Good. Take it away, Tammy. Casey, are you shaking it? I'm shaking something. <laughs> legs? That's all good. How about we change the leg? The other leg. There we go. This takes practice, right? Perfect. Yeah. Are you guys sweating? I'm almost sweating already. <laughs> What's going on here? Awesome. Yes. Yes. That's Thank awesome. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, as you can see, you don't need to know what you're doing, and you're gonna get a great workout. You're gonna have some fun. I gather up your friends.
Get Absolutely. yourself to a Zumba class. Awesome. Thank you, you so much, you guys. Thank awesome. you, thank you. Yeah, I gotta find the guy who stole the plant from over there a few minutes ago and left leaves all around the ground. Don't look at that, Charlotte. Anyways, thank you so much, Casey and the Zumba crew. Of course, exercise so great for health and wellness, and I would argue music actually performs the same function with a slightly different delivery system and generally less amounts of leggings, unless, of course, you played with Def Leppard or Twisted Sister, but not sounding at all like the 80s hair band before me incredibly well written and composed tunes. Very welcome, uh, happy to welcome our Mighty Spec Records recording artist, Dear Father, to the Shaw TV studios. Uh, Ted, welcome to Nanaimo. Thanks for having me. Very stoked to have you. And uh, as we mentioned off the show, you're from Langley, so how was the uh, trip over to the island? Uh, it was good. It's good. Very relaxing. I don't get a lot of time. I, I don't get a lot of downtime, so I always look forward to ferry rides. Yeah. Yes, and actually, it's some the islanders need to hear more of. The, uh, the <laughs> ferry trip is actually relaxing. Yeah. Get on the water. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about uh, the artist's name, Dear Father. What's the story behind that? Um, I, I had a lot of... I had a lot of problems uh, with my dad growing up and uh, ended up uh, strap, it, strap yourselves in. It's kind of a, kind of a sad <laughs> sob story. Um, but I, there was a, quite a long time where I didn't, didn't see my dad. So, and then I started this, um, this project. So I, uh, I decided to call it Dear Father. Yeah. 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 It's just kind of a, like a statement. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. I know, uh, again, looking at the um, review of some of your music, a lot of it is about, um, like, for instance, your debut album, we'll talk about it in a moment, mm -hmm. uh, was about stories, experience, and deep thoughts. So it's yeah. um, so obviously family a part of that. Uh, what else was it that sort of drove you to write your music? Um, a lot of my music come and, like, things that, it's really just things I, I get inspired by on, like, a daily basis. So um, it could be literally anything, uh, relationships. Uh, I've got a, like, you know, a song that I wrote from the perspective of an, like, a, one of my best friends. Um, and, uh, and just really things that influence my life, yeah. All right, um, so I also want to talk to you about your voice. Yeah. Awesome voice. When I was listening to some of your recordings online to sort of prep for the interview, um, listening to some tunes and a voice over my shoulder said, wow, that sounds like City in Color. Yeah. <laughs> so Dallas and Green. So yeah, I get is, that a lot. Is, I was going to say, yeah, is he a main influencer? So where does your style, of, this style of music uh, I, sort of come, root, what's it rooted in? Yeah, he's, um, like, as, as a writer, uh, I, he's, like, been one of my, like, kind of rocks, like, as far as influence. Um, and, and really, one, like, one of the artists that I listen to probably like mostly like I listen to quite a quite quite a bit of stuff but I I it always comes back to to City and Color and like that's kind of kind of my yeah music that just relax to right so yeah yeah I know we had talked to um before going on air um about asked you if you're just a solo performer he's like no I also play in four bands so is it all sort of a similar a style or is it uh does it run the game kind of over the board so I um so I, I have four bands including this project mm -hmm. I, I should maybe reiterate but yeah. like uh I'm in a uh a folk rock band from Vancouver called Future Father Figures um, I am in a uh, like an alt rock band uh, from Chilliwack called Like Bears, uh, and then um, I I am the bassist for like a, a hip hop kind of Afro beat uh, artist uh, called Movi. Oh, so, very cool. Yeah. And of course, the next cliche question is, when do you sleep? Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> never, never. never yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's great. I mean, we can just talk about how exercise can be really invigorating. Um, mm -hmm. I find music the same way, and you know, oh, yeah. obviously throwing yourself into all those projects, um, it is something very spiritual for you, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like at the end of the day, music is um, kind of what makes me tick, so, and yeah. All right. All right. Let's, I want to talk about uh, your debut album. It came out in 2017 called A Hundred Years. Mm -hmm. And again, on the website, it described as a three-year writing, writing and recording process. So I'm mean, again, you must have felt like a hundred years to get it done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Like uh, recording, especially for me, are like I, I do uh, like all this so I can play a live show for like a half an hour somewhere. So mm -hmm. that's like my favorite thing on earth is just playing, playing live. So um, recording for me, especially because you're like listening to the same song sometimes for four to eight hours straight like just drives me mental but yeah <laughs> so it definitely felt like a hundred years yeah yeah you mentioned love playing live uh what can folks uh, expect to uh experience at a dear father live performance um a lot, lot of sad music uh, <laughs> <laughs> um no but i i mean um i try and try and just make it make it fun for everyone still even though it is like an acoustic show like I the one thing that I do like like almost as much as music is 
uh, jokes and puns. So I always throw nice. a couple jokes in there yes. and yes. just keep the, you know, lighten, <laughs> lighten the mood from all the sad songs and stuff. So, yeah. All right, that's why we see eye to eye. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so yeah, we're going to move on to some more songs here quickly. I want to let, uh, again, our viewers know, uh, two, you have two upcoming shows on the island here, mm -hmm. uh, both Mighty Spec Record showcases, uh, Friday, April 20th at Duncan Showroom in Duncan, obviously, and Saturday, April 21st at the Corner Lounge here in Nanaimo. Where can people find more information about your music? Uh, it's, honestly, my main hub is just my website, and you can find all my social media on there, whatever you do, um, just www.dearfathermusic.com. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Ted, thank you so much again for uh, traveling overseas and joining us. Uh, we're going to yep, send it back to another song now. Uh, again, Dear Father, the song called Cold on the show on Shaw TV. beautiful song from Dear Father. It's called Cold, but it's certainly heartwarming. And uh, speaking of heartwarming, I want to talk about a really heartwarming event for me that's coming up in uh, Nanaimo. Uh, first of all, let's meet Chris Brown, Farmer Brown, who's very much dedicated to great food being grown from our planet Earth, right? Mm, yeah, thanks for having me here. Yeah, so we're going to do two things. We're mm -hmm. going to taste some of your beautiful food. I mean, look at this. This is art 
food is art here with uh, these wonderful plants. Can you tell us a little bit about what, say for example, this yeah, is? Yeah, so these are all harvested uh, a mere hours ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so this white one, this is called white peacock kale, and this mm -hmm. was grown at the five acre farm in Harewood. Mm -hmm. And some of these foods are wild harvested, like the, coal, the miner's lettuce. And then some things I stopped and picked up at the farmer's market on the way here. So r roughly how many foods are there there? This is a 25 greens mix. What a great smoothie that's going to be. We're going to turn and this art into you're going to put that together f uh, and show us how it's done. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the upcoming event that uh, many many communities on the planet are going to present, including Nanaimo, mm -hmm. which will be held on April 21st. <laughs> Uh, tell us a bit about that while you start putting the food together, please. Sure. Okay, I'll multitask. Okay. So, uh, historically in Nanaimo, NALT did the Wild Food Festival, okay. and they weren't able to take that on this year, and so we endeavored to host uh, an Earth Day event mm -hmm. um, because it's a really important event uh, in our community, mm -hmm. you know, celebrating our home, and um, the theme for this year's event is Earth Service. Okay. And so we are encouraging people to take action in their communities, and so part of the component of this day is uh, we're doing work parties in the Harewood neighborhood mm. and then people are going to come back to John Barsby School mm -hmm. and we're going to celebrate there together. And I hear that there's going to be interaction with non-humans as well. Baby goats are going to be there, right? They, so the baby goats were born uh, 10 days ago. Oh, wow. And so they're going to be 26 days old or so um, by the time the event uh, comes around. Well, baby, human babies and adult humans and everybody will love the, to see the interact with those little guys and gals, right? Yeah, I want to, one of my roles is to help raise the profile of farmers mm -hmm. and hey, if you want to raise goats, you get to interact with baby goats all the time. Okay, and there's going to be live music, artisans, the speakers of note are going to be there, food trucks, local vendors, it's going to be quite the event. I mean, you guys are going to be taking over Barsby altogether. Yep. Uh, well, we really want to bring people together in the Harewood neighborhood, which mm -hmm. has an agricultural history, mm -hmm. and we want to kind of revitalize that. And I heard this really great word called <gasps> agrihood, mm -hmm. and I really feel like that's something I want to work together with Absolutely. our community towards. I believe in that too. So put, put let's, some words in, to some actions to your words here. Let's, and let's show do us. an art, let's turn this art into food. Yes, exactly. Okay. exactly. Don't, exactly. don't mind my hands here. So, and then we're going to make some noise. So, yep, all the greens go in. This is a 25 greens mix. And then this is some Jingle Pot Road bee pollen. Wow. And this is some yellow point blueberries and some wild harvested blackberries. So local, I love it. Yep. Uh, and this is some Harewood apple juice. So these are from apples gleaned in the Harewood neighborhood. Okay. Hopefully that's, that's enough. That. I've got a little bit more a little water bit more just moisture. in case. And now we're going to make some noise. Okay. Okay. Noise. <laughs> Okay. So while we're talking uh, about uh, this beautiful smoothie, uh, just to repeat, Saturday, April 21st, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at uh, John Barsby Community School. So uh, that's going to be a great neighborhood event. Uh, Farmer Brown will be one of the lead uh, organizers in all of this. And uh, if you search for Nanaimo Earth Day 2018 on the internet, you'll find some, uh, some more information about that if you need to take a look at that. And as well, um, tell us a little bit about the, the speakers that are going to be at, at the uh, event. Yeah, so we're having three speakers. One of them is talking about bees and the importance of pollinators. Mm -hmm. So John Barsby Community School just earned its bee-friendly campus status oh, okay. from Bee City Canada. And so now we have a mandate to learn about the importance of pollinators okay. because 65% of our food are in, dependent on insect pollinators. Okay. And then we have a presenter on uh, permaculture. Mm -hmm. And so people are going to learn about permaculture. And then we have a presenter uh, talking about some of the positive things happening happening in the, our community. Okay, well, thank you very much. It's been a wonderful event to promote, and uh, it was a pleasure meeting you, and I wish you the best of success. I hope that I can make it that day, too, because it thank sounds you. like it's fun for everyone and a great learning experience. Everyone welcome. Cheers. To our health. To our health. Yeah, there's a third one here. Well, we planned for that. Yeah. You, you, you might want to give it a swish. <laughs> I'll give it a swish indeed. Mm. Uh, it's good. It's good. All right. I mean... Mm. Notes of green mm -hmm. and uh, earth. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. I got to admit, um, Chris, here, and you talk about it, I myself in the freezer, I've got a big bag full of um, 
yellow point blueberries, always go blackberry picking every year, and same thing, just love making smoothies, but uh, this takes a little next level compared to the ones I make. Yeah, the home, 25 so. greens mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, That's good, yeah, and same sort of deal. I mean, obviously it's um, a great, I've obviously seen a number of times at farmer's markets and getting that local produce, and again, um, I know our viewers at home can't quite taste it like we can, mm -hmm. but um, the proof is in the mixture. That's a darn tasty. You might want to put that recipe online at some point. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Well, I was going to read out the ingredients, but we wouldn't have had time. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I guess technically it's online now that we've seen it actually. Mm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. All right, one more cheers in. One more swig for me. Cheers. To our health. Well, to our health. Cheers. cheers. Happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. Oh, that is great stuff. John, Chris, uh, Farm Brown, thank you so much again for, uh, for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Oh, man. Now, um, before the show, our really mean director, Fiona, kicked me off the magic uh, segment, as you noticed. And so my good friend, Louis Beck, said, Matt, I feel really sorry for you, so I made you a t-shirt. So this, uh, Fiona, if I, you can see that there. So Louis stepped forward, made me a t-shirt about the puns, and actually raised me, made me feel so much better. So thank you very much, Louis. And in the spirit of this shirt, and the spirit of farming, let us be serious for a moment. I have two very serious friends, both of them named Gus. We call them asparagus. They kind of, they kind of remind me of Peter Pan and Patty Pan. Um, they carry it themselves with a sense of peas, no matter where they've been, whether rocking around the broccoli or hailing a taxi cabbage. And now these guys, they're mostly cool. They're mostly, not mostly cool. You know, they're kind of gnarly-ish. They're hip-ish. They're rad-ish. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, they did warn us, though, that farmers can be very, very dangerous, though, as they, uh, they'll kale squash or artichoke anyone that gets in their way that's for sure i know for some actually a little bit of better advice so i'll take some from vegetables can be tossed we tossed at me here pretty quickly we'll get some better advice from my friend rosemary had some very sage advice about there it is yeah about running out of time and also there you go i was just kaled i was kaled on live tv how about that uh, i don't know about the abuse i'm a volunteer i'm not an employee on celery that's for sure Oh man, I tell you, these, they, they rue my jokes, rue puns, rue barbs. <laughs> I think they actually, they actually are corny jokes. All right, before I uh, yammer on and turn this into a big deal and uh, soil our reputation, I'll say thanks to all, I'll throw more stuff at me. Thanks to all of our guests, our hardworking volunteers and staff in front of the cameras and behind the scenes. You can find more about Shaw TV on Facebook, facebook.com slash the show on Shaw. You can also check out previous episodes on that Facebook page as well as on YouTube. Uh, do you have an event cause demonstration or smoothie you'd like to bring to this program? We'd love to have you. We're always looking for great Central Vancouver Island guests. Drop us a line to Kelly Robinson. And if you want to volunteer on the show, as we're pretty much a volunteer-run organization, contact our volunteer coordinator, Melissa Hall, at melissa.hall at sjrb.ca. All right, before we go, and I head over back to finish off that smoothie, one more song from Dear Father called Made of Steel. Could be referring to Daniel Henrik Sedin, as far as I'm concerned. Thanks too much for doing us a solid and checking out the show right here on Shaw TV. Take me 
been thinking a lot about what I can't see And I know it's breaking me So you know how I feel Just help me get these words right And so you know I'm not made